Okay, um, good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to get started again. Um, we're still um, going through the session on um, stock assessment model features. However, we're transitioning into um, a component based on more on observation models. So about the data that we're actually fitting to and different ways of fitting. Um, and Simon has an announcement. So before we introduce the first speaker this morning. Just a quick one about the uh, dinner tomorrow night. Um, if people could, we've, I think we've got 35 people so far who've paid. So could everybody who's coming, please pay Jennifer. And if you're not coming, also let her know. Thanks. Okay, so um, the first talk in the session is uh, by John, and he's going to be talking about um, depletion models. Um, and this is interesting because it may um, make uh, us uh, think about ways to um, change the uh, timing structure within the stock assessment models. So it'll be interesting to see um, what he has in suggestions for those changes in the next generation model. Yeah, so my name is John Pinsker. I work with um, Richard McGarvey at uh, Saudi Aquatic Sciences. So can anybody, anyone hear me? <laughs> so, this is, so it's like this. Uh, yeah, so I work at uh, Saudi Aquatic Sciences in South Australia and uh, Richard McGarvey, whose talk you heard yesterday is my colleague. Um, and he gave a presentation on slice grow applied in South Australia for uh, marine scale fish species. Um, today I'm presenting a uh, different model uh, that was part of my PhD and um, it's contrasted with a length structured, length sex structured stock assessment model, um, which I'll go into shortly. Um, so just use this mouse. Um, so the authors here is um, Andre Pont and Richard Mugabe are my co-authors on a paper of this, of this work. Um, so, so it's basically in a nutshell, this is not a very sophisticated model compared to some of the models you may have encountered so far, but I believe it has some kind of value um, when the data is not poor but it doesn't have composition data, so it's got some kind of catch and effort data, then it may or may not be useful depending on if the assumptions are met. Um, so yeah, the Finch Rail 2017 paper is the uh, Pant and McGarvey co-authored paper. Uh, down there, there's something called EDM. I'd like to use that term because it just shortens extended depletion model, which is an extension of Leslie Davis. Um, you, you probably, you might remember that's uh, Leslie Davis from 1939 rat paper uh, where they studied rats in um, some city somewhere and uh, the rats were studied in a fairly controlled area somewhere in the city uh, that anyway I'll go into that later on um, uh, but the advantage of this method coming up is only that it doesn't use much data but that it um, estimates recruitment and population in all the years for which you have the data. Um, so that's uh, sorry. so that's the species that the paper was applied to, southern rock lobster. Uh, that's an example of an effort unit, a, a pot. And so that's the, um, this is just basic Leslie Davis modeling. Um, you know, it, it assumes that nothing else is happening except cats. And so you have an initial population and nothing except cats. And yet yeah, there's no natural mortality over there, but that, that is in the EDM model. Um, so yeah, it just starts from left and goes to the right. Uh, as more cats accumulates, the population depletes. And that's also correlates with time, of course. And so CPUE is just a simple CPU model here, this is linear, so catchability times the depleting population during the period of depletion. Um, uh, the, the model coming up will actually uh, be able to model uh, nonlinear 
observation equations as well. So not just Q times N, but um, Q times N to a power, but that's not um, part of this talk. Uh, you can reference to the 2017 paper for that. Um, so here's basically the meat of that extension model. So, so I was going to point here, but basically that first equation over there is just the um, depletion model here. So that period over there is the first equation. So year T, uh, you can see that. So year T um, is in the middle in the bolded part of the uh, slide. So FDP, that's just another acronym in here, which means fitted depletion period. So you can have a fishing season that is X number of months long, but if you have say only three months where there's severe depletion and there's no recruitment and catchability may be um, considered to be not varying too much over that period, then you can probably apply this method. Um, but there's some other assumptions coming up as well. Uh, so that year T, so the FDP starts the year. Um, now this year doesn't have to be the fishing season because if the assumptions aren't met at the start of the season, then it has to start whenever the assumptions are met. But from that point onwards, if you have several consecutive months where this, the assumptions are met of Leslie Davis, then that's where the start of that FDP bracket T starts. Um, and after that period where this, the assumptions end, there may still be further cats. And that has to be accounted for too before you go to the next uh, year, which is year T plus one. So this is where it differs from Leslie Davis, which often is used within the year, but quite often it's not properly connected between years. So this model connects it between the years uh, and allows you to estimate a single catchability parameter in the base model uh, across all years that you have the data for. Um, so that, that scheme up there repeats itself in multiple years. And then the bottom equation just puts that mathematically. Um, don't worry too much about the details. It just means that at the end of the depletion period over which you're fitting, you want to account for the rest of the cats at recruitment because you're assuming the recruitment wasn't happening during the fit depletion period, the FDP. Um, so you need to add that to it before you go to the next year and you subtract the cats and you account for natural mortality. Um, uh, so then of course, it comes with a ton of assumptions. Um, most of them are carried over from Leslie Davis. Uh, selectivity also has to be homogeneous uh, as well as catchability. It's catch conditioned, which is one of the reasons why this uh, works so well, because if it was effort conditions, you couldn't do this model at all, because you would have to be making assumptions about the non-FDP period, that um, period that doesn't, over which you're not fitting the CPUE, but over which depletion still occurs, you would have to account for that um, using some kind of catchability times effort. And you would have to estimate the Q, but there's no data for it in this situation. Um, because remember, this is a data moderate situation. So you don't have any composition data or anything. Um, it's just catch and effort and maybe a, a fixed value for natural mortality. Um, and then, yeah, if, if the assumptions are met, then uh, you can do several things with it uh, if you refer to the paper, but the base model that allows you to estimate recruitment and exploitable population. Uh, yeah, you don't have to make assumptions during the other time of the year, uh, except for what I'll be about to show here. Um, it can also be used to check if there's large changes in catchability over years. Uh, that might be one of the, I think, one of the more useful features of the model, actually. Um, and it can also be used to, in conjunction with recruitment. If you've got a recruitment index as well as a commercial landed index, then you can put both of them together. And that's again in the paper, that's not the focus here. Um, and yeah, since the paper, um, it, I've discovered that basically it will work for weight as well, which is a, a useful thing that will add likelihood of it being used because most fisheries have it cats in weight rather than in numbers. So it can be used the same way uh, without any changes by just using cats in weight and CPUE in weight. Um, but the recruitment won't be recruitment anymore. It'll, it'll remain in, in weight and it'll have 
uh, growth from legal sizes as well as growth into the fishery. So uh, I should also say this, this works most typically in situations where you have a legal size. Um, so then you have animals entering the legal size uh, every year. And um, then the other thing here is the FTP, the, fish, uh, the fitted depletion period. Um, that can be a brief period as it was in South Australia. So in South Australia, it's October to May, but only over January to March did we apply that uh, depletion model here. Um, but the whole catch of the whole year is accounted for, but it's only, this particular model is only applied just for those three months and the rest of the catch is accounted for using that equation previously. Um, so the, this thing is contrasted or validated to some extent uh, with a model that we refer to as LENMOD, but that has been used for several years in um, Tasmania, Victoria, and South Australia for stock assessments. And it's a length sex structured model, and it fits to length sex composition data, uh, total commercial cats in numbers, uh, and commercial CPU in weight. And it's cats conditioned as well, uses the pulp approximation. And that's for South Australia, the study area of the paper, and this talk. Uh, there's a little ridge over there between Port McDonald and Cape Zephyr. There's like a 20 kilometer shelf uh, before it drops off quite deep. And there's a lot of lobsters in that area, uh, southern rock lobster. Uh, yeah. So, and this is just a little quick schema of what LENMOD does. Uh, EDM does a subset of that. Um, so, this is the typical integrated model scenario, fishing mortality, there's a legal size over there, LS, uh, there's growth and natural mortality, natural mortality is fixed. Um, recruitment, recruitment here means into the legal size. Uh, there's an underside that's modeled by LENMOD. Uh, and then you have the, the legal size population at the center there. And uh, it's a cat's quota managed fishery. Uh, season is eight months in the southern zone over there. Uh, there's a single catchability estimated by EDM, but LENMOD, the length sex structured model, uh, estimates eight, eight um, different catchabilities, one for each month. Uh, but that can be varied like, like any integrated model. You can change the number of months that share catchability and the same for selectivity too, by the way. And down the bottom is selectivity. It can be length, sex, and month varying. Um, so, and this is an example of some of the data in the study area. So, the October, November, December. See that? Um, that's the non fitted depletion period. So, you might guess from that graph there that probably the FTP, the fitted depletion period, starts in January. And so, it's January, February, March, but it drops off cats and the CPUE does the same. Um, so you have quite a bit of cats in the non-fitted depletion period over which you make no assumptions for catchability, but you're just applying the EDM model, uh, the fitting of the EDM model. So uh, over January, February, March. Um, so the EDM model still accounts for the whole cats, but it just um, accounts for the drop off using the fitting those three months. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so back in 2016-17, the paper um, was contrast, contrasted LENMOD using the same length of activity throughout all of time, uh, very by sex, but it's, um, each month within the year had the same selectivity. And since then, we've done lots of sensitivity analysis and determined that a better version using the IIC criterion um, was one that varied January to March as one unit, October to December as another unit, and April to May. Um, now, April to May doesn't have much cats, so it doesn't bear too much on, on this model um, because it doesn't contribute too much to depletion. So the main fitted depletion, the only fitted depletion period is January to March, and the main other period that has a lot of cats is October to December in, in this application. Um, and it was estimated at maximum during that period of non-fitted depletion, and, but only quite, quite substantially less during the fitted depletion period. So this differs from the 
previous length model application. Um, and also during that period, the catchability is quite a bit higher than during the rest of the year. Um, so that's what it looks like, length selectivities during October to December, which is the non-fitted leasing period. Um, that's where it's maximum. The red and blue are the males and females. Um, and so it just drops off, up over that. That's just an artifact of the fact that landmark models um, males and females differently. So females only go up to a certain maximum size. So the drop there doesn't mean anything. It's just that it means it's dropped off. Um, but interestingly, the January to March has quite a bit of less um, animals being caught. So the selectivity is lower, quite a bit lower for both species. Um, and it differs between species. So it's not a simple um, lowering of catchability that can be accounted for by catchability parameter. It, it's something that is demographically different. Um, so then, uh, again, this is more, this done with comparing catchability between models. So um, here we're dividing basically the ratio of the simple EDM model to the land mod in each month, but what matters there is the gray bit. So January, February, and March is the fitted depletion period and the catchability is quite a bit lower for EDM. So that you can infer from that that the population will be overestimated relative to land mod, the length sex structured model. So, um, and recruitment, by the way, is quite well estimated by this model um, in terms of being compatible with the length sex structured model. Um, so what true recruitment like is, you can only guess, but to the extent that the length, strex, length sex structured model estimates recruitment, the EDM model estimates it quite well, uh, but not so for this latest round of um, study on length uh, on land mod, which estimates much lower selectivity during the fitted depletion period relative to the rest of the year. Um, so it's in the paper it was actually 12% below land mod, and now it's 34% on average. Um, and these are just plots showing the recruitment there. Um, and so in the paper, we went up to 2013 and now we've gone up to 2017. Uh, now this plot shows you the blue line, which is the EDM model. And the red line there is the, uh, the lower end of what length mod estimates, which is exploitable um, population. And the other line is the maximum that is total population. Uh, so as you can see, it's, it never completely stays within the band of those two, um, which may not necessarily happen because it's, these are two you know, quite different models. There's no immediate reason why they should always be precisely within the band, but it does. And uh, one reason maybe um, is simply because the difference here in selectivity within the season so if there's a lower amount of selectivity during the fitted depletion period, it's assuming that um, it can't reach a certain section of the population, which it can reach the rest of the year. So remember this model only fits to part of the fishing season. So there's still cats being caught the rest of the year and that cats may be accessed by, uh, from a larger section of the population. So I'm just thinking that that's probably, well, it may be one reason why this is happening. Um, so it can't account for it. it doesn't know what's happening during the rest of the year other than th this is the total cats. So there's the incompatibility between the Leslie Davis cats ability estimation and total cats during the rest of the year. Um, and by the way, this, this problem wouldn't happen if it was equal uh, selectivity or the selectivity was greater during the rest of the year, then this problem wouldn't exist either. It's only when it's lower during the FTP period. Um, and yeah, so in terms of the general model, uh, I guess it would be straightforward to just apply it as a standalone actually uh, executable file and just call it up. Uh, then you wouldn't have to worry about any coding to do with um, the dynamics of that thing. But then you probably have to do more with uh, communication between output files and input files with the rest of the model. So I guess that's a, 
a different concern that we have to look into depending on what the overall model, the general model looks like. Um, but it should be possible, um, and this is a focus question as well, it should be possible to, to do this using the existing inputs of a general model. Um, but because this model is so simple, it might actually test the software um, because it, it probably normally doesn't get applied to something as simple as this. Um, uh, and also, if you do apply it, will it be able to retain things like testing individual years between uh, for catchability? And there's a few other features that the 2017 paper that might break as well. Um, so yeah, again, the focus questions, one of them was, um, can this be replicated? Um, can a simple model like that be replicated in the general model? And yes, it's, I went actually to some trouble um, trying to do that using uh, LenMod. Um, this is length sex structured model and uh, it ended up working, but I had to change a couple of things. So it wasn't quite ideal. I mean, ideally it should work only by changing input files, but uh, that almost was the case, but I had to um, change some intermediate working vector. Uh, it was a very simple thing. And the initial state routine, that's the main thing that was tricky there um, because the initial state um, approximation of that was assuming the length sex structure. And I was trying to tweak the input so it would just continue without having to change anything, but it just, um, the assumptions couldn't be, couldn't be met given the inputs for something as simple as this. So I had to comment it out and just simply assign a simple uh, N parameter, a single parameter to the legal size population only. So I've reduced the whole, um, the whole um, inputs to simply two lengths. One is sublegal and one is legal. And then for the legal size, I assigned for the initial state just one parameter. And then um, I put some other things like length weight relationships to one. So there's no conversion problems there. And uh, in the transition matrix, um, I did the same with that. Although that actually turned out not to be necessary because uh, the recruitment, uh, not the recruitment, the growth, um, the land mod model allows you to take out um, certain processes. So uh, the input, so you can say these, these processes don't apply. So including growth, the entire growth um, routine could just be not used if you don't want it to. So I, I can't, uh, I've always used it before, but this time around I completely commented that out um, and set some other parameters. So you have a single catchability throughout um, the fit of the decent period and no, no catchability for the rest of the year. And then you can set your likelihood weights if you want to, um, there's two ways of doing that. You can just remove the data completely. Uh, although I had to keep in one dummy row for each things or alternatively you can just set the likelihood weights. And there's also a recruitment spread vector in the model. So in addition to length transition and growth from undersized to legal size, there's also a vector, a fixed vector um, that just initially distributes the settlement recruitment, the recruitment before it gets to legal size. Um, so at the earliest length, so in this model it was 82 centimeters where the legal size was 98 cent 98.5 centimeters. Um, so that vector I just put to one. So remember now there's only two lengths. So I put zero for undersize and uh, one for legal size. Um, so doing all of that and the code changes. Um, sorry, there it is. Yeah, 3%. So at the bottom over there, um, I won't show the trends because the trends were identical. So on a plot, they were just virtually identical. Um, so just in conclusion, I feel it probably has some use in some data, moderate cases. Um, but yeah, you have to be careful that um, because it's so simple that it actually does work properly. Um, so in this case, um, yeah, it's tricky. You would have to have some standalone model, ideally, and then test it against that to make sure that it's perfectly doing that which was the case here, we could test it. But if you have a situation where, where you only had the general model, then it, you, know, you have to ensure that the software picks off and all those things we just covered there. Um, oh, and there's the Congress as well next year. Uh, ah, thanks. 
Okay, thanks, John. We've got a um, bit of time for questions, if anyone has a question. Yeah, Mark. Okay, John. Um, nice to see my hometown of South End there on your map. Um, so I think malt is, malting occur early on in the season. Um, is that right? I was just wondering, like, whether you could maybe, whether the assumptions of your model were okay, such that after malting you could maybe estimate natural mortality of the of the undersized lobsters. Mm. Is would that be a reasonable assumption, or would that be stretching things a little bit? <clears throat> uh, well, that that is what the length structured modelling does. Um, I didn't cover that in detail here. It does cover um, part of the composition data includes undersize. So um, I only showed the legal size part of the length selectivity spectrum, but yeah, it does drop off in more logistic fashion. Mm. But, but, but yeah, the EDM model itself doesn't do that because it, it's not length and like structured. Um, but like I said, you can account for recruitment to legal size if you have an index for that. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, Rick. Yeah, so the big advantage of this approach is that it doesn't rely on the normal inference about declining abundance over age or length. You just need a time period when there's no growth, so there's no recruitment and no growth of biomass. And you can just observe the change of any index of abundance over that time frame, right, and get a direct measure of fishing mortality and total mortality. Yeah, that's right, as long as we're going through the assumptions there. Yeah. 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 Okay, any other questions? Okay, I, I have a question. So you, you integrated the depletion model into the uh, length-based model, um, but you turned off all the composition data and growth estimation and distribution of recruits and things like that. So do you plan to turn those back on to see how that influences the results and whether you could actually have a fully integrated model that includes the depletion type approach plus all the other information that you have in the length-based model? Well, yeah, you can turn it back on, like the growth, you can turn that back on. But um, what happens then is that, you know, as you know, mean weight changes over the years. So if you just put a fixed vector in, in there for growth, which is, I mean, growth in this uh, land mod application was fixed as well as a length transition matrix scheme, um, but it was still fixed. So you need to have um, length composition data and uh, cat's numbers as well as the cat's by weight conditioning to get the mean weight changes over the years. Um, so just turning growth on wouldn't, wouldn't, that would be unrealistic, I think, unless you have some other data to go with it. Um, so yeah, there might be some interesting combinations there, but it would have to be more than just turning things on. Yeah. Mm. So, so presumably if you had tag increment data in there to estimate growth, then turning that on would make sense. Uh, yeah. But, that, but then the model, I mean, the, the population will be structured by length. Uh, yeah, yeah there, there might be some combinations that are possible there. It's just, it's just a proof of concept. I mean. um, so question for the people with general models, um, particularly Castle, I guess, in stock synthesis, do you have flexible enough time um, definitions where you can have different periods where you, with different lengths, where you could have this depletion model estimator going over a fine time scale like months or weeks and then the rest of the period where there's no depletion estimator going on you would just sort of group it into one big time period yeah i think that's conceivable uh, there's complete flexibility on setting up uh, seasons within ss and they can be of any duration any fractional duration. So you could set up a two week period for a depletion experiment if you wanted to. And so you could turn off Q, I mean, catchability during the rest of the year and just have it during a certain period of the year and still take off the cats. Well, there's still, there still would be catch in whatever seasons you put the catch into. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be affecting the total population. But if you concentrated or had some direct emphasis on the catch during this two week period, uh, you probably could leverage it to get some additional uh, things done like what you're like 
what you have presented. Yeah. Um, yeah, because the rest, because if it's, because that really relies on catch conditioning. Um, because if you have an effort condition situation, then, like I said, you need to have some kind of catchability. Um, there are some other papers. Um, I think it's called generalized repletion modeling. Something is a fairly recent paper as well, um, but that uses some kind of nonlinear effort-based model. And if you, if you look at that, it accounts for certain properties to do with um, CPU variance over over time with effort and it's parameterized in that way, but those parameters themselves don't vary during the year. So there's still implicit constant, whereas this thing doesn't assume a constant, uh, any, anything to do with catchability. You just have to be careful with length selectivity assumptions, that's all, that it's not less during that period. Mm. Uh, any other questions? So a little bit of a comment based on that, the catchability. So um, in, in these models, you could have catchability different in each year, right? Yeah. And so presumably the general models would have allowed for that. You could put like, in, if it was like in SAM, you could have a random effect on the catchability. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of flexibility, I think, in the general models that would allow this depletion model to be integrated into the general model. Um, mm. So I think there's a lot of uh, potential here, particularly for short-lived species where the variability from year to year makes in more sort of annual-based depletion which is where we're getting a lot of the biomass in, uh, information from not work. But if it's within a season, you might be able to see the depletion. So we've been trying it for um, Dorado. We've even done it for yellow from tuna. And it seems promising, so surprisingly. Yeah. yeah, it's a simple, simple thing. And as long as there's assumptions, and it can be quite short, the period can be quite short. It doesn't have to be a long period. I can start to say it's only three months out of an eight months. And there's less, a bit less than half the catch. So, um, Yeah, yeah, this fleets in the length sex model of Lenmod. Mm. Yeah, Malcolm. Uh, yes, just a, a point to be made, though, in terms of general models, is I don't see how we can uh, allow for, if you like, new research on new methods until they've happened. Uh, I mean, you can keep in mind the... the uh, uh, the sorts of directions that might be needed. But I mean, if, if you're going to, I, I don't know of any uh, generalized model that would handle this without customization of some kind. And that's to be expected as new methods arise, and many of them will with invertebrate fisheries. I think with the scale fisheries, you know, we've got the ground reasonably covered. Um, but with a lot of the invertebrate fisheries, they have all sorts of idiosyncrasies and oddities and strange bits going on um, and they're not well covered by general models so um, by all means uh, explore what might still be possible now but let's not expect too much of this uh, this model to be this this future model can I just say that that yeah I mean um, this simple model is um, it probably works best for invertebrate species because they tend to have not growth in certain phase of the year so um, just before we finish, I want to make a comment on this. Actually, I think this approach is fairly easy to, to integrate into the current general models. I don't. I mean, I think in stock synthesis, it probably has most of the features to implement this. Um, but one point that Malcolm brought up is sometimes it's good to use a simple model on the data to help you understand what's going on before you start relying on the results of the the more complicated general model. Because with a complicated model, there's so much going on, you may not understand it. Whereas in the simple model, um, you know, you can understand it better. You may not rely on the results of the simple model, but it might help you in your development of the assumptions that you're including in the general model. Yeah, but, yeah that's correct. Yeah. Because I probably forgot to mention there that, that in data rich species, you, know, you can, you can maybe it's, you can use it to test for changes in uh, catchability, which actually happened for a brief period in South Australia. Um, I didn't show that here, but that, that's in the paper. Um, so just, just that's probably useful. Um, it doesn't tell you why it happened. Uh, and, and the direction of it might be tricky as well, but it, it probably does indicate there's something going on, maybe changing effort during the year or some, some kind of thing is happening that changes catchability, something complex. Mm. 
Well, thanks a lot. Yeah.